Today I'm going to be breaking down Lucky Tackle Box's Pan Fish Box for April, so let's get started. One of the first things when I got this box and I opened, I said, sap sucker lures, huh? And I really thought it was funny because I have never thought to fish a plastic that looks like this. It looks like kind of like a minnow. It's big, bulky, it's got a funny tail, but it's super limber and it does have bulk and it's got a flat out ton of action. What this meant to me is bulk means bigger fish. If I'm fishing a bulkier plastic versus other small panfish plastics, the, the smaller ones are naturally gonna tend to appeal to more fish versus the bigger ones are going to appeal to less fish, but bigger fish, bigger fish, want a bigger meal, smaller fish, uh, that could appeal to them. That could be their bigger meal. But the thing with this bait is you can rig it to where it'll swim upright like so, just like any other swim bait, and that tail will kick all over and give you crazy action. But at the same time, if you have bedding panfish or panfish are down associated in the bottom, you can rig it to where you can hop it along the bottom. Let me show you that. Now here I have it rigged to be on its side, just for like shell crackers and crappie that are down spawning in the spring this time of year. I just like to hop it along the bottom, let it fall down, that tail will kick, hop, let it fall down, that tail will kick. Now if I wanted to rig it the other way, I could do like so. And there I have it rigged upright for a cast and straight retrieval style swim bait retrieve. I have this on the 1 16th ounce jig head and I like to fish it on as low as 4 pound line and up to 8 pound line. Alright, next we have the Zoom Mini Tubes. Now if you don't know uh, about tubes or never had a chance to fish tubes, you're missing out. Tubes are probably one of the most versatile baits in all of the fishing world. People use them for all sorts of species. And the mini tubes right here by Zoom are phenomenal for panfish. A lot of people don't know how to rig them, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, I use these little tubes right here on jig heads up to 130 seconds ounce. Um, with the mini tubes, I generally don't go too much bigger because you have to insert the jig head inside the tube and I'll show you that. But the nice part about a tube is if you hop it and let it fall to the bottom, it's going to fall differently every time. So if you're hopping it off the bottom real slow and letting it fall back down, which is the retrieve I do for tubes, cast it out there, slow jig it up, let it fall, slow jig it up, let it fall, or I dance it. I keep bouncing my rod tip and let that jig just dance in place and let that tube go up and down and it falls extremely erratic and it's going to show them something different every time. So now let's rig it. So here I have a 132nd ounce jig head and that white zoom tube. As you can see, the eye on top of the little ball head jig right here is coming straight up. This is for either sliding a bait to the back of that head, and you can use the head exposed, but in regards to a tube, you're going to put this head right inside the tube. So the first thing you want to do is lubricate it. I know these things are lead based, but lubricate it. I wouldn't worry too much, and you're going to basically wiggle it around through the hackle on the back of the tube. I know my hand's probably blocking it. And I got shaky hands, so bear with me. And I'm going to slide the head of that jig all the way up in the tube. Then I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to take my finger now, because I can see where the eye of that jig is protruding. I'm going to scratch it pretty hard right there. And you, just like so, you're going to see the eye of that come out. I'm going to straighten out the hackling on the back of that tube, just like that. And now I can tie right onto that eye, and that is a rigged tube. All right, next we have the 1 16th ounce Apex Roundhead Jig. I have a million jigs in my pan fishing box. It is absolutely critical that you have them. This looks to be like a size 4 or size 6 hook on there. I'm leaning more towards a 4. Now let me show you something with Roundhead Jigs, and all jigs for that matter. I see guys... I just cut off my fingernail, but luckily I trimmed that already. I see guys get jigs, and they take them out of the package, and they go, oh man, and you can see the paint going over that eye right there, and they go, I can't put my line through there, I got a defective one. There's a simple way to fix this. You take this hook point, or you take one that you don't want to worry about dulling, I've done it a million times, it doesn't really dull the hook, and you take that hook point, and you push it around and wiggle it around, on the opening of where that eye is, where you would tie on your line, and just clean them out. 
The reason why a lot of companies do not have them to where the paint doesn't cover the eye like that is it almost doubles the cost for them making jig heads. It doesn't affect the quality of the jig head, the quality of the hook, or how sharp a hook there is. It's raising the cost by doubling how perfect the paint job has to be. So simply use another hook that you don't care about and clean the paint out of that eye. It's going to keep the cost down for you. You can pretty much get double the amount of high quality jig heads versus one where that eye wasn't painted over like so. Uh, these Apex Tackle jig heads right here, the little ball head, I was using these on my show, filming, catching bass with these. I rig little plastic swim baits on these, little plastic creature baits. The ball head is very nice, strictly for if you're retrieving it across the bottom, and let's say there's a rock right here and you hit it, the ball head's going to find a way around. It's going to roll down. It's going to come over. It's not going to deflect straight. It's always going to be moving around, finding a different way to come around that structure or cover. Um, you know, very inexpensive setup right here. A really stout hook on these right here. That's a very stout hook for panfish. And the thing that I like about that is if I'm using a bigger, thicker, uh, like, panfish creature bait like a little jig or a little tube or something with a lot of appendages and I know I'm down there in that cover I'm gonna rig this up I'm probably as low as four pound though I'm gonna say start off with six and up to ten pound line and the reason why I'm going heavier is I'm using these ball head jigs right down and along the bottom if I hook a good panfish in there I want to move them up away from that structure and cover quick so I'm gonna use a little heavier line and maybe a fast action light spinning rod to hoist them up and get them out of that cover and structure faster. If I hook a big panfish, I want to land them. I don't want them to run around in that cover and break them off. If I'm fishing open water, I'm probably going to go a little lighter jig head and a little lighter line. Now here we have the Johnson Minnow Spin, an inline spinner. I grew up fishing inline spinners on trout streams, on farm ponds, at local lakes, anywhere. It looks like a little bait fish and they flat out catch fish. And an inline spinner is just a spinning type of lure where the blade's going to kick around the main body of the lure. The main body of the lure sits directly behind it and the spinner rotates around it like so. Now let me pop this out of the box. This is pretty cool. I know I'm gonna go catch some fish on this right here for sure. Now this one that I got is pure white. Um, this is also, man, they package this sucker good. <clears throat> Oh, there it is. Okay. Mine says it's uh, 1 24th ounce. So I know it's light, nice and light, and I could slowly reel it over the top of the grass lines and just slowly cruise it over. The heavier one's going to be for fishing that deeper water, but you can count these down. What you want to do is cast it out in front of you and go 1, 2, 3, and estimate how far it fell in the water column. That way, when you cast these spinners out, you can bomb it out there, cast one, two, three, retrieve it across the top, count one, two, three, four, five, six, retrieve it across the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and retrieve it a little deeper, a little deeper, and a little deeper. So you're covering new water every time. You can catch crappie, red ears, shell crackers, uh, trout, bass, everything on little inline spinners like this. This is a pure white. Now what pure white offers you versus other colors is it reflects UVA light. The same radiation that comes off the sun that tans our skin, that's UVA. And what white does is it reflects UVA. So it doesn't necessarily look white to the fish. It looks more like a disco ball appearance. It's just like a bunch of uh, reflecting light up there and the cool part is it has a nickel blade on this one which is also good on those clear sunny days that also puts off a lot of flash and reflection in the water so this is going to look like maybe one little bait fish up there high and clear clean water that they can come up and hit um, if you got a gold blade that's for that overcast if you got a darker colored body um, that may be for that darker color water, but an inline spinner is always going to get you bites. I fish this down to four. I don't like fishing them on two. You have three little treble hooks on there. Um, I like to kind of, once I hook the fish, never give them any slack. Keep it going. I want to keep tension on there. There's a little forward weight on there. If you allow the fish to shake his head too much, he can leverage these little treble hooks loose. Um, I always like to maintain a good amount of tension on there. I'm going to use a light action spinning rod. Okay, a light power class, let me clarify that, and a moderate to moderate fast or fast spinning rod, probably somewhere in that seven foot range. I like to cast these real far and cover a lot of water with, uh, with these spinners because they do have good casting range and they are really good at effectively getting 
fish to come out of structure and cover and come up and grab them. Now here we have the Northland Tackle Micro Shad. It looks to be like on a 132nd ounce jig, red, jig head right here. It's a little skinny swim bait. And in the spring when the shad start spawning and then you see a bunch of little tiny reflective bait fish in the water, crappie go crazy. That's right around the crappie post spawn time where they need to eat back up. If you got crappie in your bodies of water and a little tiny micro shad swim bait like this, it's got a little tiny swim bait tail on there so it's going to kick nice and smooth. A little light jig head to where you can reel it really slow and just hover right over the tops of those bushes or trees right along creek channels where those crappie are going to move back out from those shallow flats. Look for those trees right adjacent to a creek channel coming out and those crappie will line up. You cast slowly retrieve something like this over the top of those those crappie are going to come out and they are going to get it in a big big way a little tiny hook on here you can fish this down to two pound i would say up to six eight would be pushing it um, i'm going to probably fish this on a ultra light setup to a light setup with that same uh, pound class line i love to fish ultra light if i can get away with it i just have a whole lot more fun and i like taking my time catching these panfish now here we have the Northland Tackle Slip Bobbers. I use a variety of floats, bobbers, whatever you want to call them. If you're not familiar with slip bobbers, you definitely need them. A traditional bobber where you can pull down the crimp and wrap your line and go there, you know, to where it's set in one place and can't adjust unless you take it off and do it again. Let's say you have a tree that's nine feet deep and you look on your fish finder or you know the trees out there, you're fishing from the bank and it's nine foot deep to the top of the tree. Well, you know how hard it is to set a nine foot leader and to cast it out there? It's very difficult, but with a slip bobber, I'm gonna show you how to rig it. You can adjust a stopper up your line. Let's say the top of that tree is nine feet deep and you wanna put your lure eight feet deep directly over the top of it, you could set your slip eight feet up your line to where your slip bobber is gonna slide right up there and stop and you can dangle a little jig down one foot over the top of the tree and shake it and get those fish to come out and get it. That's where a slip bobber is deadly effective. The Northland slip bobbers like this are feather light. I fish these slip bobbers on two pound test and I'm very confident with it. I don't like crimping a line onto a float or a bobber that's super light if there's any sort of weight to it or I think it's going to crimp my line and a slip bobber doesn't crimp your line at all. It doesn't uh, affect your line negatively whatsoever. So let me go ahead and show you how to rig this. So here's the components that it comes with in the package. You're gonna have two of these setups. You're gonna have a bead, you're gonna have the tension knot on a plastic sleeve and then you're going to have the slip bobber itself. How this works is this plastic sleeve, you're gonna put your line through that, you're going to slide this up your line and then you're going to shimmy this knot off of that plastic sleeve and you're going to grab both strings and you're going to pull to tension this knot onto your line. From that point, you're going to take the plastic sleeve that's now sitting on your line and you're going to slide it off your whole rig. From there, you're going to take this little, little tiny bead and you're going to slide it up to where it meets your knot. What's going to happen is that little bead's going to get stopped right in front of that thread right there, that little slip knot, and it's going to stop it. And then you're going to have your slip bobber where the line goes through that to where your bead sits on top and it's going to meet that knot all in conjunction like so. What that'll allow when you reel up the bead and your slip will slide all the way down to your lure and that knot will reel right up inside your spool. Now I'm going to show you what that all looks like said and done here. As you can see, I slid this off the plastic sleeve and I trimmed the string. I trimmed both edges about half as short to where they reel up into my spool a little bit easier. I had that little bead that's going to slide up and meet it. And what this is going to do is simply going to block my float and it's going to make sure it stops it right there. So here I have my jig. It's set down roughly probably two foot deep. I cast out there. Everything's right here. I can reel this all the way up to the tip of my rod like so. I cast out. It hits the water. Everything slides up and it meets that knot. And my lure falls two feet deep. I can slide this little knot 10, 12, 15, however far up my line. It's going to reel into my spool. I have a simple and easy 
package to cast just like so, and then that jig's gonna slide all the way down to where I set and adjusted that strike zone to be. Now here we have the Raw Outdoors, the two inch little multi-jointed swim bait. I've been fishing little swim baits like this for quite a while now. Uh, this is an eighth ounce. It's the slow sinking version. These are multi-segmented. What that means is as you go to retrieve this bait, it's going to kick around a lot. It looks just like a baby bluegill. This is in the baby bass pattern. Uh, the baby, pat, baby bass pattern works substantially well in ponds. In ponds, a lot of the time they get over flooded with bass. The bass tend to be the dominant species in ponds and they get used to eating other baby bass. Um, so that being said, the baby, pat, baby bass pattern <laughs> works substantially well in ponds. Also bluegill patterns. Bluegills, baby bass, you pretty much can't go wrong. This is a cast out and retrieve style bait. It's the slow sink. So once again, you want to pay attention when you cast out how fast it does sink. So where you're not repeating the same cast across the surface, you want to search high, medium, and deep. You want to bring this right along structure, grass, branches, right through there. You want to get it close and you want to let the fish come out and get it. You don't want to get this into the cover. You just want to get it near cover and structure. Let those fish come out and get it. That's what a swim bait is good for drawing fish out. It looks like a natural fish. Um, what I like to do, a lot of people like to pop little jointed swim baits like this. It has a treble hook. Uh, the treble hook can get hooked up into the body and the joints if you twitch it a lot. So what I like to do with little swim baits, cast them out, reel them slow, and occasionally speed it up a little bit and then slow it back down. Speed it up because it looks like the little bait fish chases the bait and then slows down and kind of drops his guard as they go for that change in speed. And what you will find is the bigger pan fish, the crappie, little bass, everything are going to eat that right after you do that acceleration and pause, that change of speed. Acceleration and slow down is when they're going to execute on it because they think this little bait fish dropped his guard at that point. Um, I'll fish this down to four pound test and up to 10 pound. It's got a little treble on there, so you don't want to horse them when you hook them. Um, a little fast to moderate fast action, light spinning rod to ultra light spinning rod is going to be absolutely fine. From there, we have the big old mustad hooks that were in here. These are 3L hooks, but it is for autism awareness. Lucky Tackle Box threw these in for you guys. I know this isn't a panfish hook, but they threw it in for you guys just to be cool, and it's for autism awareness, um, which is super, super cool. Check it out, guys. If you're not signed up for Lucky Tackle Box, you need to be. The bass, the panfish, the walleye, the inshore, they have it all for you guys, and they are second rate to no one. They hire guys like me. They hire guys like Travis. They have Darcy, who's, you know, on your, on your booklet this month. You know, lots of cool people working for the company, and they are a class act. If you have any issues with your box, you're not getting your box on time, you can message them, and they will get right back to you guys. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.